What's up everyone, this is Marky2200 here and welcome back to my Need for Speed testing series where today we'll be ranking all the rear wheel drive sports cars in Need for Speed Pro Street from worst to best based on their speed capabilities. As usual, all the cars have been upgraded with stage 3 handling and performance packages, we're running manual gearbox, we're using NOS and all the cars have been tuned properly. Tunes of every car are in the description down below. With that said, let's see which of the rear wheel drive sports cars in Pro Street is the worst for speed races and that at number 19 we have the Nissan 240SX. The 240SX did a 136.08 which is quite poor. Unfortunately, the gearbox is this car's main bottleneck. But it doesn't have a lot of power to start with, so even with a stage 4 gearbox I don't reckon it would be any good. At number 18 we have the Corolla which has the exact same problem like 240SX. Unlike 240SX, I think the Corolla has got a lot more to give. Hence why I will test this car with stage 4 parts when we're there. I'm not sure if I'm going to add it into results, I'm just curious what the Corolla has got more to give. So we'll see. At number 17 we have the Z4 and this is the first car where the power is its problem, not anything else. It's just overall a very slow car. And everything else is actually quite decent. Handling is okay, gearbox is okay, it's just the power. That is just nowhere near what I want to see out of a speed car. At number 16 we have the E46 which has pretty much the exact same problem as the Z4. I would classify this as a bad car. It just doesn't have the power that I would want to see out of a speed car. 129.04 is far from the top tier. Then at number 15 we have a car that I did not expect to be up here. We have the Supra. I mean, you've heard the stories that this car with this stock engine can produce over a thousand horsepower. Well that may be true in real life. In Pro Street, at least for speed challenge that is, it has nowhere near a thousand horsepower. At number 14 we have the E92. And the E92 is, well, I mean, it's pretty much a trend right now. It's an okay car, but it lacks power. Everything else is pretty good. I mean, yeah, handling is decent, but that only gets you so far. Gearbox is good enough for 400 km an hour, but without a lot of power, you won't get that far, I would say. At number 13, we have the S2000, which is the exact opposite as the previous couple of cars here. The power and the gearbox are good, however, everything else is bad. Suspension is terrible. Handling is bad, bad downforce, and it has a speed limit of 354 km an hour. Such a shame. At number 12 we have the Solstice, and the Solstice main problem is that it's unreliably jumpy. Sometimes, I mean that just basically means that the downforce is terrible. But sometimes it just wants to jump up a little bit, and the speed at about 220 miles an hour, or 350 km an hour, that is a death trap. At number 11 we have the NSX, and the NSX, I mean, I wasn't blown away by this car. It is good, I mean it did a 126.95, which is good, but it won't make any wonders. So I would classify this as a decent car? It is what it is though. Cracking into the top 10, at number 10 we have the Cayman, and the Cayman did a 126.73. I mean, I would actually have to say that with the Cayman, the NSX, number 9, number 8 and the number 7, they are all within a second. So all of these cars are quite good and I, it's quite difficult to say which is the absolute best. I mean, obviously these cars did the best at this particular track. But, I mean, is there really a major difference between these cars? I mean, the Cayman was a good speed car. The G35 is a good speed car. The next one, at number 8, the Elise, that is a good speed car. But, I mean, they aren't amazing. But, I mean, if you are, like, racing and you have split stream to worry about, they all act pretty much exactly the same performance-wise. So these are not the cars that I will bring into stage 4 uh, testing because a 126 in my opinion is still not good enough. I mean the IS350, it, it, it's the best of this tier I would say, a 126.17 and it feels pretty much exactly the same like a G35. It's a good speed car but not great. It does handle quite nicely but great handling only gets you so far. I would say moving up a tier, 
We are now in the 124, so that's quite a big difference compared to the previous one. It's still not not good enough for stage 4 testing. But the 350Z and number 6 is over a good speed car. But it has a speed limit of 394 km an hour. Why they bother with that? I don't know. And number 5 with the Sylvia. And the Sylvia, I mean, I was quite surprised by how good this car is. A 123.39, that is actually pretty good. However, it was just, just not good enough for it to qualify for stage 4 testing. The next couple of cars have. And number 4 we have the RX-8. And this car has great handling. The power is amazing. Gearbox is good. I mean, it did a 122.32 and that's quite amazing. I said that the next couple of cars have qualified for stage 4 testing. Except for number 3. The DB9. So why has the RX-8 qualified but the DB9 hasn't? Simply because this car has a speed limit of 370 km an hour. Which is something you can't fix with stage 4 parts. So that is super unfortunate. I wanted this car to proceed to stage 4 testing. However the speed limit made it so it wasn't. Or it didn't. And number 2 we have the RX-7 and everything about this car is great except for its gearbox. However, when we apply stage 4 parts, the speed limit, I mean it's not a hardcore speed limit, but the speed limit of 390 km an hour of the RX-7 will be gone when we install stage 4 parts. And then number 1, by far the best rear wheel drive sports car, we have the SL65 AMG with a 118.92. Everything about this car is phenomenal. The power is great, the handling is great, the gearbox may only have 5 gears, but the power is so good that it's enough. It just has bad suspension, so it pretty much is the exact same like the Massa 3, which also had bad suspension, but you can tune it away. Well, I'm, I'm, no, hang on, that's a different way, that's the wrong way to say it. You can tune suspension thus far and in a certain way to make it good because if you don't tune suspension and leave it as what i would say my default tune where the fronts are soft the rears are stiff it just bottoms out and that's something that you don't want even with my adjusted suspension tune it still bottoms out at the banking corner however i think that this tune is sufficient enough to say that it doesn't matter that much but basically, um, yeah, it's a DLC car, but fortunately, unlike many DLC cars, this one does not have a hard-coded speed limit below 402 km an hour. So that is why the SL65 is the best rear-wheel drive sports car for speed testing. And those were actually all of them. Yeah, I mean, the SL65 being about a couple of seconds better than the next Pax one, I mean... The game actually does classify this as a supercar. However, if I were to put this with other supercars, it would go up against cars like the McLaren F1, the Koenigsegg CCX, the Porsche 911 GT3 RS, and I don't think that's fair. So this is why I put it at the rear drive sports car rather than the supercar. Same with the DB9, because I think the DB9 is just a sports car. Basically, if you look at Need for Speed's carbon steers, where the SL65 and the DB9 are also tier 2 cars rather than tier 3 cars. I mean, it makes sense. And that is actually what pushed me to make the decisions to say that the SL65 and the DB9 are classified as sports cars and not as supercars. But that is that. I've got this question quite a lot, so that's why I want to clarify that. For now, if you've liked this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you wish to stay updated on all my future streams, videos, testing series, consider subscribing. The next testing video will be all the real world drive sports cars from Worst to Best based on the drifting capabilities. And that's the last testing video before we moving into the supercars. And that is what I'm really looking forward to. For now, this has been Marky2200. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Take care.